Hello everyone, I'm Stratos Gaves from the University of Amsterdam. Um, I would like to start by saying that I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for being invited to uh, present my recent work uh, in your workshop, COPED. Um, uh, today I would like to discuss about quantization uh, and discretized neural networks. Uh, a few words about me, I'm an associate professor at the University of Amsterdam and uh, also uh, uh, a scientific manager of the Kuba Lab and co-director together with Professor K. Snook and uh, Professor Max Welling. Uh, the lab has about 10 students and it's a collaboration, a research collaboration between the University of Amsterdam and Qualcomm. I'm teaching the degree learning course in the Masters of AI at the University of Amsterdam and all my material, all the material is available online. And I'm also a co-founder of the Elegon AI spin-off. Um, uh, it's a spin-off between the University of Amsterdam and the Dutch Cancer Institute with a mission of uh, building automated biomarkers for response to immunotherapy for oncology. My interests uh, are on uh, uh, temporal learning and dynamics, efficient vision and uh, learning, and machine learning for oncology. Uh, the past few years have been a golden age for learning algorithms. We all know it, um, uh, I believe. Uh, and um, uh, algorithms can do amazing things. They can predict which pixels contain uh, bicycles or, or sky or humans uh, or, or road. Um, it translates picture into text with amazing applications. Uh, it, it, uh, like algorithms can... Um, uh, model very complicated uh, biological processes like protein folding or they can even beat the world champion at least it's all in a game of Go. These things were uh, almost uh, unthinkable uh, not uh, much earlier. So uh, what is the secret recipe behind all that? Well for one bigger data right like bigger data has really uh, changed the landscape um, while uh, 10 years ago almost uh, ImageNet was thought to be uh, huge amount of data, uh, well, it was definitely needed for training Alex and the first uh, deep neural network of the modern age. Um, uh, by now, we, we have uh, uh, petabytes and zettabytes of, of data all around us. And even more importantly, they're generating, they're being generated at a, a tremendous pace uh, with uh, devices becoming cheaper and cheaper, more of a, like easily uh, available and also their capabilities uh, uh, becoming stronger. Uh, digital data are required, uh, sorry, are generated um, uh, at a tremendous pace. Of course, this data is heterogeneous. Uh, you got all sorts of data from all sorts of devices, and um, uh, there's definitely quite some uncertainty because uh, uh, the devices that generate generate this data are not necessarily always high precision. Um, bigger data is one part of the story. Of course, bigger models um, have been uh, the other part of the story. And in fact, these two are, um, uh, you know, they're not, they're in tandem. They're not like in isolation. Uh, so as the data grows bigger and the tasks are becoming more and more complicated, the models become also uh, bigger so that uh, we can max out the accuracy in our tasks no matter what's the cost. And uh, yeah, here we've got um, a plot of all the possible, well, all, all the models that have been, well, not all, but uh, quite a few models that have been generated over the past few years. Uh, and their top one accuracy, and we see that AlexNet is actually already quite a big model. Uh, VGG, uh, the VG networks, which were basically uh, a bit larger, AlexNets uh, were uh, uh, blowing up the, the size uh, in exchange for a performance. So this already indicates this uh, symbiotic relationship. Uh, nowadays there are uh, models that can do even better, like much better, and without too big uh, 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 memory footprint, uh, prompt footprint, not as big as VG. however uh, they're still pretty, uh, pretty large. So although uh, you know, the past has been about bigger data and bigger models, the future is on the edge. And um, uh, I put here just four applications, uh, four prompt applications, uh, uh, to explain you what I mean by this. Uh, so we've got here autonomous cars, which is uh, a very relevant application for this workshop. We've got mobile phones um, that are going to use AI, medical devices for which uh, uh, AI 
is becoming more and more important or even robotics uh, and what is common between all these it's uh, um, well first of all to the best of my knowledge these are perhaps the most prominent areas where AI we, uh, you know where we expect AI to be used um, but also it's about mobile devices it's about devices on the edge that they are not uh, AI centric right right like a car's purpose is not to uh, do AI car's purpose is to move things around uh, or uh, the purpose of the phone is not to do AI it uses AI uh, but the purpose is to connect people and so on and so forth which means that um, uh, we've got a constraint here uh, with, with respect to the type of AI we can uh, embed in these uh, platforms, not just because of the you know, Moore's law uh, that uh, we cannot uh, get better and better devices. Um, I think actually one way or the other, this uh, will never stop. However, these uh, devices are not just about AI. So this means that AI cannot devour all the resources because these resources are uh, required for more core functionalities. Uh, however, um, this is not the only reason, that's a practical reason, but uh, there are also theoretical reasons um, uh, that uh, perhaps imply that smaller models uh, lead to better machine learning. Um, so, uh, do uh, uh, bigger models with a higher accuracy indicate uh, 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 better AI? Uh, that's a very good question. So, um, constraining models, um, uh, regularizing, uh, that means regularizing, and regularizing means better generalization. So actually, by 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 forcing our models to not uh, uh, devour too much uh, of uh, of their uh, uh, you know energy resource of their um, uh, uh, of of bits, uh, we we might actually get uh, even more accurate or more robust uh, uh, performances in the end. <clears throat> so today I'm going to discuss about the relaxed quantization for discrete neural networks, which was uh, a work that was published, well, by now it's two years ago, um, and there were some very interesting follow-up works. Uh, uh, the team uh, was uh, compri comprising uh, Christos, uh, Luisus, Matthias Reiser, uh, Tanya Blackenford, myself, and Maxwell. So. Um, compressing neural networks uh, is a very uh, important uh, task. And uh, this can be done either by pruning, so uh, you can uh, remove neurons uh, and you can remove weights, and that will lead you to a smaller model, like a, a, a model which has uh, a different topology than uh, what was originally planned. And because you know this topology is reduced, uh, you can uh, 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 make it cheaper. Uh, another way of, of uh, compressing neural networks is to uh, quantize. So instead of having um, continuous uh, signals uh, like uh, uh, um, our weights or our activations, we're uh, uh, constraining the model to only pick from a set of weights and a set of uh, activations. And this is actually uh, the focus of uh, this work. Uh, so uh, quantization to make it a bit more. Um, uh, to go a bit more in depth uh, means mapping a continuous signal to discrete values um, and um, uh, it's been around for a very long uh, time uh, as a concept. So quantization is a, by definition a lossy procedure. Uh, for instance, um, you know, if we had a roulette and uh, we had, you know, the roulette is actually a circle and disk, there is no way we can figure out the exact rotation of, of the roulette by just knowing that you know the ball is in uh, uh, the slot number 25. Um, we know approximately more or less what's the rotation but we cannot know the exact rotation so we have lost this uh, information because of the quantization and perhaps the simplest quantizer is just the round function right like if you go to the numpy uh, uh, library and you type round uh, the round function it's going to quantize your value to like the next integer <clears throat> so, uh, what about quantizing then a neural network? Well, we can round up the weights, uh, or we can also round up uh, our activation. So, these are the two uh, most relevant uh, variables or quantities that we have in our, uh, that define our neural network. So, um, uh, running them up uh, basically 
quantizes the neural network itself. And uh, naively quantizing uh, uh, a model, I mean, that's possible, right? So we could uh, take an existing model, which is uh, trained, uh, and then uh, uh, already trained, uh, but not in, with quantization in mind, so with uh, a normal continuous uh, uh, precision, like full precision. And then we could uh, just round up the, the weights and uh, uh, the activation software. But of course, that will not be optimal because uh, then uh, we're going to have errors in every step, in every different calculation, in every uh, neuron calculation. And all these errors will compound and propagate uh, uh, upwards, uh, thus you know, quite possibly disturbing the final uh, prediction a lot. Uh, so instead, a better idea would be to consider the quantization during training. But what are the challenges for this? Uh, well, the challenges is that, uh, well, we all know that neural networks um, admit only differentiable functions, uh, and they do so because uh, we want to use backpropagation, the workhorse of our optimization. And uh, the problem is that run functions are, not, are simply not differentiable, right? Because you've got this, um, uh, this uh, slope, this, uh, infinite slope, <clears throat> it's not possible to take the gradient here. This means that if we were to use the run function well, in, in our neural network definition, we wouldn't be able to back propagate. Uh, we, of course, we can use pseudo gradients, and that is, uh, uh, has been proposed in the past. Uh, that would generate, however, a biased model. That is a model which is going to optimize something that uh, is different from what we have uh, in our uh, objective. So in this work, the key idea is that um, uh, uh, normally the weights or the activations, so if you consider their space, the, the, the space of numbers they get, this is continuous, right? Uh, so uh, what if we uh, now uh, um, think about very hard and say that, you know, in reality, what really happens is that the weight is not really continuous. Instead, it comes from a, a deterministic grid here like this, uh, after adding some noise, epsilon. So um, uh, by doing so, by making this assumption, then this means that uh, if we were to know a good uh, 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 grid and a good noise model, uh, we, were, we would be able to uh, uh, predict uh, uh, no, pretty good values for our, our continuous weights and then uh, represent them by their uh, quantized counterparts instead. Uh, in that case, we would learn the weights on the grid by something. And uh, the stochastic noise here, that uh, you know, uh, we also have to take into account, uh, would amass the categorical probability um, in this weight grid. Uh, so this looks a lot like, you know, uh, uh, instead of having uh, weights over all possible, uh, uh, over all the whole possible range, we would uh, cluster all the weights in this uh, like uh, bin, or uh, these weights in the, this bin, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, this would be the noise uh, that uh, uh, accumulates, and this looks uh, a lot like a categorical distribution. So basically, what we're, we would be saying then is that our uh, weights uh, are uh, are uh, following a categorical distribution whose parameters we have to uh, learn. It's like our uh, uh, weights for the neural network and if we do so then we can uh, uh, do a pretty good more job in uh, uh, modeling uh, uh, the weights themselves <clears throat> and if we can wrap everything in a differentiable manner then uh, we can have quantization inside the work propagation now it's important also to uh, clarify here that um, uh, the uh, here I'm talking mostly weights and I'm going to use the weights uh, as an example for the remaining of the slides however um, uh, our method uh, quantizes both activations and weights. So that whatever we describe here uh, immediately applies to activations also. Uh, so our model, to do so, uh, our model comprises uh, four components. The first one is a quantization grid. So we have to define a grid uh, uh, on which we plan to uh, 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 determine our weight values. 
And uh, you know, this grid has to be flexible, right? So if uh, uh, we uh, choose uh, strange uh, numbers, then this will not be representative. We cannot just uh, create magical weights uh, and uh, have them work. Um, specific weights, uh, specific weight values uh, are going to be uh, optimal uh, for our problem. Uh, another component is the, the way that we are assigning continuous values to quantized values, so the quantization assignment. Uh, a third component is the noise model, so which, uh, which type of noise do we believe exists? Uh, do we believe that generates stochasticity uh, in our uh, continuous weights? So, we, you know, so which type of noise uh, turns our discrete weights into continuous ones? Uh, and then last, uh, we need the relaxation procedure. So um, because uh, actually we have categorical distributions, um, categorical distributions are quite discrete, so we need a way to uh, uh, relax it and, uh, and uh, make the process differential. Uh, so we'll go now one by one to each of the uh, steps. So in the first step, uh, the quantization grid uh, uh, comprises the set of possible values for the quantizer, and we set uh, a uh, a fixed grid of budgets. So we're saying, you know, like we've got uh, four bits, then we generate the grid uh, as uh, in this uh, array. And afterward, we, uh, we uh, scale, scale up this grid and uh, add some uh, offset. Uh, so this is uh, alpha and beta, uh, the scale, uh, are the scale and the offset of the grid and um, uh, allow us to uh, fine tune the specific uh, types of uh, 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 values for weights that are uh, relevant, uh, that are optimal for our task. Uh, and yeah, this is important because uh, if we were to use the original grid, so 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, this do not necessarily uh, make up for uh, good values, right, for weights. So these are not necessarily good values for weights. <clears throat> Uh, so the second step is uh, the quantization assignment. Uh, and the assumption here is that the quantizer performs uh, a deterministic uh, rounding up to the nearest uh, uh, grid point operation. So that's uh, uh, for efficiency. Uh, and uh, we can also see that uh, in that sense that uh, since the input is stochastic, so the, the, way, the weights that we're obtaining are uh, uh, the, the weights from the grid, which is not stochastic, plus the uh, noise uh, variable epsilon, which is stochastic. So by doing so, then we can say that our quantizer function uh, is in the end also stochastic. And uh, then we can see this uh, as discretizing the input distribution to the quantization grid and something uh, uh, grid or points, so weights from that. And in that case, the probability for each category of weights, so the uh, probability for each bin here, uh, is uh, uh, the difference of two cumulative distributions. This means that in, in order to uh, be able to compute efficiently the probability of each of our uh, bins that correspond to weights, uh, we need to uh, have an easy way to compute the cumulative distribution of our noise model. And uh, this uh, brings us to the uh, 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 third step, uh, the third component, the noise model. So the noise model fills up the blue space um, uh, to make for the categorical distribution, and it's an assumption. We, we assume uh, whatever noise model uh, we believe uh, reflects the reality, but also is convenient for uh, the modeling purposes. Um, so the noise distribution determines the categorical probabilities, how we are going to obtain uh, the probabilities uh, for the categorical distribution where from we're going to uh, sample. Uh, so it determines how probable it is for each input point to move towards a specific grid point. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, we want uh, a distribution which is easy to compute, um, with is, uh, whose CDF, whose cumulative, cumulative distribution function is easy to compute. Uh, for this reason, we assume that uh, 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 the distribution, uh, uh, we assume that the noise model acts additively on the input. So that's actually going to uh, allow for um, easy reparameterization. And 
uh, we also assume that the error model, the noise model, uh, uh, follows a zero mean uh, and sigma variance logistic distribution. The reason is that uh, the logistic distribution has the sigmoid as a, a cumulative uh, distribution function, uh, which uh, is very easy to, uh, you know, to compute and to backpropagate. Uh, in the end, uh, as a relaxation procedure, uh, this process is still not differentiable. We still have to sample from the categorical distribution and the sampling is not differentiable either. Uh, we replace categorical distribution with a concrete distribution, uh, or also known as Gumball softmax. And uh, the process looks a lot of cat like categorical distribution, but uh, one that is easy to sample from. So this actually is quite similar to the DIE, DIE reparameterization, reparameterization trick, but for categorical data, not for continuous data. Uh, and um, uh, one potential problem is that uh, when I will got like a large number of bits, uh, uh, then uh, the number of categories that we have might actually grow very large, which is very expensive. Then we have to sample once, uh, like for all possible categories uh, for each uh, uh, individual uh, weight and activation. This can be very expensive. So instead, what we can do is we can define a local grid instead of a global one. And uh, uh, like that, we can uh, 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 save uh, a lot of computation. So uh, by the end of it, uh, the training uh, uh, is uh, uh, fully differentiable. So, uh, so sorry, the model is fully differentiable. So uh, we can do easy training with green descent optimization. So we optimize for the weights. Um, uh, so the, the for the weights as well as the scale and the offset of the grid. And uh, we're also uh, optimizing uh, the variance of the logistic distribution. Optionally, we can set the offset in the grid to zero because then one of the grid points will always be set to zero and give, this gives nice sparse properties. And uh, uh, in, in our uh, experiments, we quantize all the layers, even the first and the last one, which is often left out. Uh, the algorithm in short uh, is uh, um, uh, quite uh, short and concise, so very easy to implement. Uh, so we first need to define the interval points. Uh, uh, then uh, we must compute the uh, uh, cumulative distribution functions for each of the uh, bin centers, uh, determine the categor categorical distribution um, uh, parameters, and then sample uh, from them using the concrete distribution. And in the end, uh, uh, our final weight is, you know, uh, a multiplication of the uh, sampling uh, from the concrete distributions times the grid uh, values. How does this look like? So uh, uh, clustering, uh, uh, we cluster around grid points. Uh, uh, sorry, and what happens in the end, what we observe is that um, uh, the weights are clustered around the grid points. That actually shows a nice, if that we capture a nice inductive bias. So that, you know, we're doing a good job here. Uh, what is also very important is that uh, 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 we see this to be uh, consistently um, uh, uh, similar over all different layers, and we in practice reduce loss performance a lot compared to the rounding of the grid. Quite interesting, also, it seems that for certain layers, uh, we don't even need all. You know, the, the model doesn't even use all, all the bits, all the grids. Uh, experiments on MNIST and uh, VHG show that uh, our uh, models uh, obtain uh, much uh, uh, like. Quite, quite nice, quite, quite uh, good uh, competitive results uh, while being, uh, um, you know, robust to uh, stochastic to noise. And uh, when we're training even bigger models like resonance or mobile nets on ImageNet, uh, we observe that our models are on the Pareto front. So we are, uh, 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 we're obtaining uh, uh, as high accuracy as possible while minimizing the number of uh, uh, operations uh, on the device. So uh, I would like to close this uh, talk by saying that there have been some very interesting uh, follow-up works uh, like Bayesian units, unifying quantization and pruning, um, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, a practical method for mixed uh, precision and with, uh, uh, with pruning in mind. Uh, and uh, I would like to conclude uh, this talk by saying that uh, you know relaxed quantization 
uh, the proposed algorithm is a simple and powerful algorithm for fixed point uh, uh, low bit quantization. It allows for end to end training, um, uh, uh, which does make a difference in the quantization uh, uh, domain. Uh, it quantizes all the layers uh, with good accuracy. So, quite often, uh, 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 these are, uh, you know, like the first and the last layers, layers are being omitted for convenience. However, when uh, you know you include them, uh, uh, these models, like other models, uh, might have problems. Ours uh, seems to be actually quite robust. Uh, and uh, interestingly, uh, in some layers, uh, not even the whole correctness is necessary, which, uh, you know, it could be because of, of the data uh, used, so not too complex data, but perhaps there are uh, uh, even uh, uh, more opportunities on uh, optimizing uh, the model further. Thank you.